time to call upon our visitor from the US. The session is titled Transforming the Traditional Print Business, Devising a Roadmap for Implementing Strategy. So the last session, there were a lot of questions raised, and now it's time to find out what the strategy is. Along with Thomas, we shall have two print CEOs on stage, Mr. Vasan Goel of Gobsons and Vishwanath Chetty of Printworks. Please welcome all of them on stage so they might give us the gyan of how we can transform our businesses. A big round of applause to welcome Thomas and his team. Okay, so I have been thinking about a common problem that we have. So it is 1810, and we arrived here from New York yesterday. So my body is telling me that you have gone the entire night without sleep. So my body is telling me it should be sleep time. And you have been sitting for an entire day. So my challenge right now is to keep you awake for one more hour before the music begins. So I'll do my best. So, sorry? So we learned this morning that there are challenges in the business, for sure. We also learned that there is still an incredibly large business, and in fact, in India, it's growing. Right? The rest of the world, it's not growing. China, yes, but in the developed world, it is not growing. So what we hope to do over the next hour is to share at least our company's approach to the solution. I do not have the solution for you because there isn't one solution. I do, I am so certain that the first, the most important thing is to accept that standing still, doing nothing but hoping, is the wrong solution. I always say to my management team, hope is not a strategy. It does not work. It feels good for a little bit. When someone, my sales people say, I hope we're going to have a good month. And the answer is, thank you, and you should go pray, but what are you going to do? So let us begin with two more let's say stories about what's happening here in India. So we'll do that for five or 10 minutes and then we'll get into the last piece of my presentation. So uh, Vish Shetty is here somewhere in the audience. So Vish, you're gonna tell us a little bit about what you've heard and what you've done in your business. Thank you for joining me. Good evening everybody once again. All that we know from various talks of what you heard as share to benefit group at the BMPA and from the talkers is the print packaging is growing, commercial is going downhill. And what do we need to do in terms of surviving and thriving? Let me first identify few of the problems, few of the threats that the commercial printing is facing, which I'm sure all of you are aware 100%, but you really do not know how to tide over the same. To identify them, one would be the downhill market vis-a-vis -vis the overcapacity of the industry today. Second would be the reducing prices. The clients, they really want to ring out the prices as we keep calling nichorte. Now, with all this, you also face escalating costs and the shrinking profits. Then comes the demanding client. These are all your stumbling stones. So what is the roadmap? Unlike most printers, I have a background in advertising, a client servicing guy who is moved into printing. So right from the beginning when I started on my own, there has been some amount of value additions in everything that I did to my clients, from designing, correcting their artwork, advising them. Believe me, unfortunately, all these advices went for free, but it has added up, ended up, culminated in good relationship with clients, where then there is a prize war. They say, listen, wish, this is what the prize is, can you do it? I get an opportunity. I have the right to say, sorry, I can't do it, and I've done it many times. And uh, th there are times when you really have to have the guts to say, no, I can't do it. Let me assure you, friends, there are certain printers who have killed our own field. Like for example, there is an instance where I face one of the larger printers today. To one of the clients, he started giving all artworks and positives free. 
he only charged for printing. This is where we have to stop this kind of practice. Thank God there is no positives today. He can't do that. So he's got to find another method of luring a client today. That's up to him, but most of us would not adapt to this. What is the roadmap? As I said, because of my advertising background, I've been doing a lot of things other than just printing, which I would call the print plus services. You need to increase the kind of services you give. You need to add up to the facilities that you offer. The roadmap therefore would be sharing resources with uh, people you know. This is where I said, this is something that we learned from the panel of shared benefit. Like for example, when a client needs something fabricated in acrylic, there are certain things they complement each other. Certain thing, part of it is to be printed and fabricated in acrylic. I have a line of people who would give me material in acrylic. And today the need is, as we always see in the transition from paper to soft media, there is a lot of demand for duplication of CDs and DVDs. But the DVD needs a small sticker on top. So the client will come to you. If you have a source to duplicate DVDs and CDs, you take up the entire job. That is adding a job to you. In addition to that, most people do not see HR divisions as resources for your business. Only possible area that you would have seen HR guys would be for a house magazine or a news bulletin which the HR handles. Quite often that also is handled by marketing or the administration or someone else. But today there are a lot of modern training methodologies used where there are lots of work happening. There will not be, quantity may not be huge, but the items will be huge. Like for example, I am doing a particular training program for a client where I procure 10 packets of crayons from a bookshop or for example a timer, a crayon in addition to uh, the clay for a model meeting. All these added up together, 30% of the whole job may be just printing, 70% of his add-ons. Recently I did a motivational exercise for a startup multinational company where they wanted to identify and reward the first 100 employees of the company. They had employed about 75, 80 and the discussion started. How it started is they said, okay, let's take everyone's signature and make a nice collage and put it up in the office so that everyone will have a look at it and they feel nice, you know. It's like, okay, pampering them, boosting up their uh, motivation levels. Yes, but suddenly came an objection, like for example, if an employee does something wrong, he's either sacked or he he said, Are, you can't wash it off, they know water is all, water soluble. The solution found was, use acrylic paint, take the palm paint on the canvas. It gave a beautiful result. And even I did not know till then, acrylic paint dries that fast. It really dries fast. It gave no problems whatsoever. Lastly, I would add, as printers, you will have to start using computers to either correct designs or create designs on your own because dependency on ad agencies for many of these things has come down because lots of clients have an in-house designing today with graphic designs. But they do not know how to work paper, how to use design for printing. Now, when we as printers do artworks, clients do not pay the right price because we have a stamp, we are not designers, we are not creative people. This is where to start with, don't charge petty peanuts. Let us charge the right charges for artworks, otherwise we will be the loser. This is my roadmap and it has worked in the last two years. In spite of the recession, my turnover in a lot of ways would have come down. But these are the jobs where you can make 20-30% as against the small little margins that we see in printing. question for you. Culturally, how difficult was it to convince your employees, your team, that they must change? How long did it take you to convince them that this is the right path? Uh, my size, I did not have a problem of convincing my employees on this because when it comes to designing and artworks and these areas, it is personally supervised by me. It's not that I have 20, 30 people in my design team, I have just three people. The final go there comes through me, so there was no problem there. When it came to that hand printing, 
believe me, the entire input that went into the exercise was little bit of my thinking on the way home or on the way to the office and half a day in the client's office. That is it. I would charge something like 30, 40,000 rupees because it started in a small way. If I had known the exercise much before, believe me, that was something where I could charge a lack of rupees. The other exercise that I did for a large company, luckily they did it with me, RPG group of companies did a corporate identity kit where every company's logo was standardized and the instructions were all collated together and we published a corporate identity kit. As a printer, believe me, I charge one lakh of rupees. But if an ad agency had to do it, they would charge nothing less than 7 to 10 lakhs of rupees. That is an area that we need to change. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Vish. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next, let's call it Indian story, is a gentleman that you saw earlier today, uh, Visant Goel. And Visant is somewhere in the audience, and here he is. Lines. One is security printing, which is uh, predominantly dealing with governments and large corporates, under which we are doing labels and some sort of other uh, product <coughs> lines. Um, it's a commodity business. I don't have much expertise in that. My colleagues are working harder on that line. What I know is that they have uh, found special solutions like track and trace or why the client is using a label and can we get into the usage part of label and they have been successful. The other part of business which I look after is uh, book printing and book sales which I can talk about and we are in terrible shape right now, terrible time. Books are, the sales are declining. There is a threat from electronic books, iPads, Kindles, uh, threat from digital printing threat from uh, television and media, the reading habits are going down. In the education sector, also people are moving towards e-learning and other things. So overall, the market for product, for books as a product is declining. Also, uh, competition, recession, it's normal. There are 100 printers who are cheaper than us, there are 100 printers who are better quality than us. They will. Uh, supply faster, whatever. So we don't, there are a lot of things that are happening. So what, what do we do in these times? How, how can we compete with these external factors which are not in our hand? So I'll share with you some examples that we have done. Some of them have been successful, some we are still implementing. I don't know how the result will be, but we are trying. So strategy as we see it is, is continuously shifting and we take a viewpoint on the market. We, we say, okay, this is our view of what is going to happen. Based on that, we take a call and we decide to invest or take an action. And then we see if it's successful or not. If it's successful, very good. If it's not, then do something else. So. Um, First thing in the last two or three years that we have done is um, what really my customer is looking for. Uh, pricing, quality, faster deliveries, what, what, what we can do. Everyone else is doing it. So first thing is we started choosing our customers carefully. We cannot service every customer. So we have to identify which customers we can choose and, and service well who will pay us. Very important. We started choosing product lines that we can manufacture efficiently, which will give us more contribution as the gentleman uh, about finance was talking about. So different product, product categories, different kind of books. Not every type will give you same amount of money or will have efficient production in your plan. So that helped us. Uh, we went to some of our top customers to ask them why they buy from us. And there were some very interesting uh, answers. Uh, I'll tell you a few of them. Uh, one of our top customers uh, is a lady. And she said, um, why are you asking me this? Are you crazy? <laughs> so 
So I asked her, no, tell us really, why you buy from us and not somebody else? So, uh, well, she did not raise the question of price. She did not raise the question of quality. No, no talk about it. She said, I buy because I feel comfortable with your company. I, and I said, how do you feel comfortable with our company? She said, I've been working for 10 years. Your team is same. I know everyone in your press, so I know the press minder, I know the dispatch guys, I know the pre-press guys. They call me if there is a problem, or I can call them directly. Well, it works for her. She said, I'm very happy. That gives me a lot of confidence to work with you. And I will continue to grow that business. That works for her. We started thinking, can we do it with every customer? Can we introduce all our team to all our customers? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there was another big customer whom we asked this question and he said, I feel confident working with you because you are investing continuously. So every two years you are coming back and telling us you have done something, you have invested here, you have invested there. So I feel confident that I am spending some money with you and you are putting it back into business for my use. I feel very confident and I will continue to support it. So, different people have different aspects, different customers gave us different insights of what to do. Earlier I had given an example of uh, a special case where we went to a customer and said, European scheduling, Indian price. I don't know about China, but this is what I can do. So we were able to win a significant amount of business from Europe and some part from China. So these are the strategies that we are implementing. We are also trying to invest uh, in technology, how we can service faster, reduce our manufacturing costs uh, and see where we go, rationalize capacity, everything, everything that we can do and we continuously think and invest and keep changing the position. Thank you. That's it. So, if I had to interpret, there is no magic. It is fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals that make you a good manager of a business. Simple, simple. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. So, let me tell you a bit about a story. It's a good story, but embedded in the story is it could have been a disaster. So, uh, prior to our company being called DG3, it was called Cunningham Graphics. And Cunningham Graphics was founded on one business line, just one. We printed equity research. So analysts would sit and they would think about what stock to buy or which IPO to invest in. And this is back in the days when there was no mobile device. It was very, very basic. It was boards way back when it was boards and film and so on. And this company grew to over $100 million. And the margins were magnificent because, the, by the way, the printing was not so nice. It was black and white, it was stapled, it was not high quality printing. But we would receive content at 10 o'clock in the evening, we would print all night, and that material needed to be on the street in London, in New York, in Hong Kong, in Tokyo, in Sydney the next morning. And that was the basis of the business. And the margins were crazy. Brilliant, brilliant. And that business today, it was 100 billion. That business still lives today, but it is 10 million. Not 100, it's only 10 million, because the rest is sent electronically. So the analysts are still typing and they're still disseminating, buy this, don't buy that, but it's moving electronically. So the story goes something like this. The gentleman who founded the company, who's now retired, he, saw, he went public back in the days when anything could go public and you could do well. Soon thereafter, he was acquired, the company was acquired by ADP, the big, big multinational company, ADP. They paid a crazy amount of money for the business. 
the founder of the company, this is public information, so I'm not telling stories out of school, he walked away with 44 million US dollars for a printing company, for a printing company. Incredible. So Michael is now living in San Diego, and he has a yacht, and so on. So life was very good. The printing industry was very good to him. However, however, ADP soon found out that when you apply very big company rules to a company that really needs to pay attention to pennies, they could never ever make money. So the company was sold to management. And the company, which is now called DG3, 10 million of research, most of our revenue is financial printing, it's also pharmaceutical printing, and it's commercial printing. Okay? So in 2008, we were acquired by a private equity firm. And private equity firms want to buy something for $1, and typically, five years later, they want to sell it for $3 or $4 or $5. It's about the money. Now, the timing was very poor because in April of 2008, the company was purchased, and then Lehman Brothers.